Hey guys, Jeremy here, and this is my top 10 movies of 2017 video. Now admittedly I'm doing this a little earlier than usual just because this is the last day I'll be able to do this in my studio here, so I thought I'd get it out of the way with. There are a few movies that I didn't get to see, there are some that I won't be able to see until the next year, one of them being Shape of Water, The Post, and there's a few others that aren't available to me right now, which I'm a little bit pissed about, but whatever. They'll be in the running for next year. However, I do have one honorable mention that I do want to mention before I start the video, and that's Manchester by the Sea. I'm saying that mainly because I didn't see it until the beginning of this year, but had I seen it last year, it would have been one of my top films, if not my favorite film of last year. Manchester by the Sea is an incredibly endearing film about family and about hardship and about responsibility. And Casey Affleck kicks it out of the fucking park in that movie. But yeah, that's my honorable mention. If you guys didn't see it, make sure to check it out. So now moving on to my top 10. Admittedly, some people are probably going to be like, well, what are some of my choices? But admittedly, this is what I thought. I actually had the full nine down but the last one I had an issue filling in just because I was trying to figure out was that really a great movie for me personally but in the end this is my list this is what I thought were the best movies of 2017 so without further ado let's get into number 10 Number 10 is War of the Planet of the Apes. Aside from the title being incredibly misleading, this was a satisfying end to the Ape Trilogy. I was super into this. Admittedly, I did not see the first film in theaters. I did watch it on DVD afterwards, and the sequel, the second film, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, is still, in my opinion, the best movie in the series. This film really gave us a good end to Caesar. Admittedly, a little bit of a cheesy one. I did like the conflict of the film. I liked the aspect of human versus ape the opening is absolutely incredible however there was a few logic issues that just kind of made me go yeah about it mainly the giant freaking front door in the base and now no one's watching it that really threw me off otherwise I liked it I liked the interactions with Woody Harrelson and I thought it was a decent end not a perfect not an extraordinary end but a good end to the Planet of the Apes series. Number nine is Get Out. Now admittedly, Get Out was a standard movie for me. It had some cool elements into it. I just wasn't on top of it being like a great movie. However, after watching Jordan Peele's video of Vanity Fair and re-watching certain parts, there's a lot of elements on uh, talking about social social issues as well as just race issues that were very prominent very under the skin but once you saw them you're like ah oh, I thought it was a cool movie I liked the social concept of it I thought Get Out was a very thought provoking very a very in depth sort of horror film as a horror film itself it's kind of eh but of its whole social structure, it's very compelling. And that's why it's number nine on my list. Number eight is a film that is here mainly for its technical prowess, and that is Baby Driver. Baby Driver was incredible. How well the film was synced to music, how much music played into how the film was put together, how it was edited was an incredible achievement in terms of filmmaking. Edgar Wright continues his streak of really great movies. This was an awesome chase movie, this was an awesome heist movie, and this was actually a really good character movie. Aside from the mm, kind of chop out cop out ending this film has you in the seat throughout the whole film just from a technical perspective is a absolute major achievement if it doesn't win for sound mixing or sound editing or if heck if it doesn't even get nominated for film editing i'm gonna be pissed but that's why it's number eight on my list. Number seven is a movie that is hilarious, not because it's a comedy, but because it's a true story about an incredibly ridiculous and hilarious story, The Disaster Artist. This was a film that I actually kind of was a little bit hesitant as to it because James Franco was working with Seth Rogen and his brother, Dave, and I had a feeling that it was just gonna be another Seth Rogen, James Franco, trip. Just them being eh, funny together, stoner jokes, pop culture jokes, and everything. But this wasn't. Franco really embodies the idea of what Tommy Wiseau is. He embodies the character in his mannerisms, how he talks, and just how he interacted with people. And what's really good about the movie is while it's funny, it's very uncomfortable. They replay out a lot of incidents that's happened in the film, and they don't they're funny in certain areas, but they're also very uncomfortable, very like, 
I can't believe they did that. And I like that he doesn't hide that. I kind of wanted him to try and do a little bit more investigation, like how the movie got the money and all the other stuff. But what I really liked as well is that they followed the book that was written by Greg Sestero, the disaster artist, and they did as much to keep it true to the book as Greg Sestero wrote it. So I thought that that was a really good idea and the film surprised me. So that's why it's number seven on my list. Number six was a horror movie that blew me away. I actually didn't know that this movie was rated R until the first five minutes, and that was it. It was a absolute thrill ride the whole way through. It was scary, it was funny, it had great character building, it had fantastic child performers, and it really, really hyped me up for the second part. Admittedly, there were some parts that were just a little bit over embellishment in certain areas, but I still thought it was a great movie. I watched it twice and I enjoyed it pretty much as much as the first time. Admittedly, the scares and the jump scares and the surprises weren't as ooh to me, but that's how it is always with every horror film. And that's why a horror film never will really be a number one for me on a list. It's just because the scares are what matter the first time you see them. But either way, it was still great freaking creepy ass Pennywise, Bill Skalsgård did a fantastic job and made me absolutely terrified of him. And that is why it is number six. Number five is another movie that took me by surprise and that's Wind River. Holy shit! This film was a great investigative film but much like the, the writer's previous work, which was Hell or High Water, this is a realistic story with pretty natural progression and just well written characters and a well written story. However, it is simplistic, and that's the only kind of takeaway from the movie, is that it's just a very simple story, but so is Hell or High Water. But it's a great character drama, it has really cool uh, set pieces, the idea of it following about what actually happens with Native women and the murders that go unsolved up north is very disturbing. But I also thought it was respectful and it kind of wanted to bring attention to something that is still happening. I really liked Wind River and that's why it's number five. Number four on the list is yet again another surprise, but as you'll start to notice in this list, a lot of these movies surprised me because I didn't think they'd be that great. Number four is Only the Brave. This movie took me by surprise completely because it was directed by Joseph Kaczynski or whatever his name is, the guy who directed Tron Legacy and Oblivion. Both interesting, but very not really that great sci-fi films. And he proves that he can do really good true stories. And not only that, this is probably the best film ever made about firefighters. This doesn't over dramatize the bullshit like uh, like backdraft it doesn't make everything kind of like a hollywoodized story like ladder 49 this was a true story about real guys and they are respectful there's maybe one or two parts that are a little bit hollywoodized in terms of how they're shot but otherwise everything that happens in the film is what happened to these guys i thought it was extremely respectful i thought it really puts you in the feet of what happens with these bushfire firefighters and it was a a really good character film. Josh Brolin was fantastic in it. Whiplash Kid was great in it. I thought everyone was really good, even Jennifer Connelly. I thought Jennifer Connelly was just gonna be the wife character, but she actually had purpose to the film. So in the end, that is why Only the Brave is number four. And really, any firefighters who watch my videos, you should watch this movie. It's the most respectful one that's ever done to your guys' job. I'll be honest, it's the best one. I know there's a lot of really bad ones that really badly describe your job but I think this one was really respectful. Number three is of course the man with the claws, Logan. Now admittedly, I thought Logan was decent when I saw it the first time, just because I saw an article talking about how it was Children of Men. And admittedly, this movie is very similar to Children of Men. However, on a second viewing, I really appreciated it more. I appreciated the character drama. I appreciated the progression of the characters, as well as this is just a fantastic send off for Logan, our Hugh Jackman. He has been so dedicated to this character. Sir Patrick Stewart does an amazing job as Mr. Xavier, and I thought that both of these guys went out on a high note with both characters. This film had surprises. This film had incredibly gut-wrenching moments. Also, the girl who plays X-23, she was really good too. 
Whether we'll see a spin-off film with her, that's kind of up in the air. I thought that the chemistry together was really good, considering you couldn't understand each other for more than 90% like of the movie. So I thought it was a really good film. I think it's one of the best X-Men films ever made, and we are very blessed to have had such a great send-off for one of the greatest comic book film characters ever put on screen. Number two was originally going to be my number one, but then after just a little bit of thought about it, it's going to get number two, but it's really bloody close, and that's Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri. I love Martin McDonough movies. I loved In Bruges. I love Seven Psychopaths. So I knew I was going to love this film, but I was also wanting more than just really cool, funny, dark humor, and you get it. For every joke that happens in this film, there is an incredibly uncomfortable dark moment that follows it. A little teeter-totter between humor and gut-wrenching emotion is literally like this the whole movie. And you are just along for the ride and soaking up so much emotion throughout the film. Frances McDormand gives a fantastic performance. If she doesn't win Best Actress, I'm going to be very surprised. She's absolutely vicious. She's savage, but she also is trying to prove something in this film. Woody Harrelson totally surprised me with a really short but a very great performance in this film. And Sam Rockwell once again shows that this guy is super talented even when he's playing an incredibly stupid hick. Now admittedly this movie did end a lot differently from what people are used to and a lot of people didn't like how this movie ended but if you're used to Mark McDonough movies he always ends a story just before you think the final chapter happens and I like that it did this in this film not as much I was I would say as in Bruges did and Bruges has like a great ending but I still like Three Billboards Outside Ebbing Missouri it was the only movie I gave a 7 out of 7 this year so in the end I really enjoyed this film and now number one my favorite movie of the year is a film that returns to a world that I deeply enjoy and literally was the most impossible film to make of this year, Blade Runner 2049. I loved everything about this movie. The aesthetic, the characters, the story, the music, the look. Every single frame of this movie should be a backdrop in a museum. Roger Deakins kills it on the camera. Denis Villeneuve kills it in the directing chair. Ryan Gosling and Harrison Ford kill it. Especially Ford, because he looks like he cares. He actually cares about a movie again. Hans Zimmer and the other guy gave a great soundtrack to this film. This film was not only loyal to the original, but it built on the film, made it even more interesting, more compelling, and just broaden the universe. Snow in LA still amazes me. Every aesthetic of the film is fantastic. Some of the best world building I've seen in a long, long time. I enjoyed this film for every turn it took even watching it a second time. When I went and saw it a second time, I basically was there to see if I would get bored because admittedly, this movie does have a long run time, two hours and 44 minutes. I didn't get any feeling. I didn't even look at my phone. I was literally just looking at the world around. The first time I was focused on the story. The second time I got to appreciate the world even more. Just the idea of a continuing Soviet Union. The snow in LA. San Diego being a garbage dump. Las Vegas being a dirty bomb incident. The idea that replicants are so sophisticated, so intertwined with human interaction. That and many other reasons why I thought that Blade Runner 2049 was my favorite movie and the best movie of 2017. So in the end, guys, that's what I thought were the top 10 best films of 2017. I know there's a few movies on here that some people might have expected. I'm still thinking about maybe seeing Star Wars one more time, but I'm pretty adamant with what I thought about it. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to look at some of my previous content, I'll leave a playlist in the next at the end of the video. But if you like this video, leave a like down below and maybe even subscribe. Anyways, guys, happy 2017. Let's look forward to 2018. More good movies, more bad, but either way, just more movie-enjoying experiences. Anyways, that's all from me. See you guys next year.